Welcome to the Parables of Jesus with Dr. Peter McLuhan. A parable today is the two builders. People love to listen to Jesus teach. They love not only the miracles that he performed, they love the stories that he told. Parables are earthly stories with a heavenly meaning. The word parable is used 50 times in the New Testament. Parables usually tell a story with two levels of meaning. They can easily be missed if you're not listening carefully. Jesus used parables as a way of helping his listeners discover hidden thoughts and attitudes in their hearts. Those with open hearts heard and received the message of Jesus. Those with hard hearts usually missed the central message of the parable. The parables of Jesus can be found in the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Luke recorded 16 unique parables. Matthew recorded six unique parables, while Mark recorded just one unique parable. And there are seven parables that are told by all three of these writers. Jesus used different types of parables. Some were very short, not more than one or two sentences, while others were longer. Narrative parables were stories with a twist at the end that catches the listener by surprise. A great example of these longer parables include the prodigal son and the good Samaritan. Jesus loved to use the element of surprise to reveal the receptivity of the listeners to his story. The parable of the two builders is the first parable that Jesus told. He told this parable at the conclusion of the first major sermon that he preached known as the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus said, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. Jesus went on to say, Everyone who hears these words of mine and does them will be like the wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain fell and the floods came and the wind blew and beat on the house. But it did not fall because it had been founded on the rock. Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 and 25. And Jesus said, everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like the foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain fell and the floods came and the wind blew and beat against the house and it fell and great was the fall of it. Matthew chapter 7 verse 26 and 27. These two builders had a lot in common. What makes them alike is they both wanted to build a house. They had a dream to build a good house. To build a house in the Bible can mean a number of things. It can mean to build a life. Now, nobody wants to fail at life. Nobody sets out to be defeated by life. People don't plan to waste their lives. People start out with high dreams of building a good life. To build a house in the Bible can also mean to build a family. Most families want to be successful. They want their children to be successful. People want to build a happy home. Building a house in the Bible can also refer to building a ministry. A church is called the household of faith. No ministry wants to fail. As we continue to talk about these, what these builders had in common, we see that they both followed Jesus. Now, we're not talking about a believer and an unbeliever in this story. We're talking about two believers who followed Jesus. These men were listening to the best preacher preaching his most important sermon. Both of these men had a dream. They wanted to live the best life that they could. Both of the men heard the truth spoken by Jesus. Both of these men faced a storm. A storm in the Bible is trouble. It is facing difficult times. You're either in a storm, you just came out of a storm, or you're about to face another storm. That's just how life is. In life, you don't have to look for a storm because a storm will look for you. 
That's why it's so important to have a good foundation. Now let's contrast the builders. Jesus said one was wise and one was a fool. And when Jesus called the man foolish, it was because he already knew about the final outcome of the man's life. So the first builder was wise, but the second builder was foolish. This tells us a lot. A wise person and a fool can both have a dream. A wise person and a fool can both listen to Jesus. Jesus warned that a wise person and a fool can both enter a storm. And while these builders can be compared and contrasted, it's clear that they had major character differences. This is Jesus' assessment of the two builders. In the Bible, to be wise is the ability to apply spiritual truth to the realities of life. Being a fool has nothing to do with how educated you are, how smart you are, or how much you've been able to teach yourself as a self-taught person. You've all, we've all met educated fools. In the Bible, to be a fool is the inability or the refusal to apply spiritual truth to the realities of life. Wisdom goes beyond information. It has to do with decision-making. What made one builder wise and the other builder a fool? It had everything to do with their foundation. The wise person builds their life, family, and ministry on the rock. The foolish person builds their life, family, and ministry on sand. One built on rock and the other built on sand. They did not start at the same place. Only one acted on what he heard. Now, the foundation is always where you start when you go to build a building. Everything else depends on the foundation. Rock takes time to work with, but you can start building with sand immediately. Rock is expensive. Sand is cheap. When you pass a construction site, you can get a good idea of how high they intend to build by how deep they dig down. These builders did not start at the same place. And we're living in a day when people do not start with the Bible. Some start with education, how they were raised, or by their life's experience. Some look at the opinion of their friends. Evidently, you can even attend a Jesus seminar and still be a fool. Jesus said that the wise builder acted on what he taught, but the fool did not. So information does not distinguish the wise from the fool. There are hundreds of churches around the world with Bible-believing fools. They listen to the words of Jesus, but they still build a house on sand. Only the builder who acted on what he heard was wise. And so Jesus asked, Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I tell you to do? Luke chapter 6, verse 46. One of the reasons there are so many cracks in our life and family and ministry is that acting on the word of Jesus is not our first priority. The word of God is motion activated. When you act on what Jesus said, his word springs into action. Luke added, the wise man building a house dug deep and laid a foundation on the rock. Luke chapter 6, verse 48. Wise people dig deep into God's word to discover all the blessings that God has for those who act on his word. Now, some followers of Jesus try to mix rock and sand. But until the Bible is put into practice, the Bible stays in the Bible. It did not become apparent who the wise builder or the foolish builder was until the storm came. Storms are an important part of God's plan for our life. Storms reveal our foundation. Storms help us see what kind of foundation we have. God already knows, but he needs us to know that we have built 
on a solid foundation. When the storm of life comes, those who built on the rock stand tall. We're able to praise God no matter what happens. We're able to trust God no matter what happens. We know how to forgive. We know how to love enemies. We know how to endure hardship. We know how to release the power of God. We know how to heal the sick, cast out demons. Now, Matthew says, when Jesus finished these sayings, the crowds were astonished at his teaching. Matthew chapter 7, verse 28. Applying the astonishing teaching of Jesus to our daily lives by the choices that we make will cause people to be astonished by the presence of Jesus in our life. We'll overcome the storm of life and help others who have been ruined by those same storms. If your life has been ruined by a storm, we invite you to turn to Jesus. He knows how to put the pieces of your life back together and set you on a firm foundation. Ask Jesus to forgive you for building on the wrong foundation. Turn to him for salvation. He will save you. If you turn to Jesus as you have listened to this story, write to me and tell me what God has helped you understand tonight. We'll take a moment and pray for people, especially people who are suffering with COVID and with pneumonia in your lungs right now. I command your pneumonia to go in Jesus' name for your lungs to clear and for you to come out, out of that hospital bed and to return to your life. Be healed in the name of Jesus. If you're suffering from lower back pain, especially with a ruptured disc, and we just command that rupture to heal right now in Jesus' name, for your spine to align and for your pain to go. Pain go right now in Jesus' name. I feel like God is touching some eyes. If you have a left eye that has an injury, a work-related injury, God wants to heal that tonight. I command your eye to be healed right now in Jesus' name. If you were just healed, write to me and let me know what God has done for you. Next week, we'll continue studying the parables of Jesus. We hope this message has filled you with living hope in Jesus. If you would like to talk with someone about your spiritual journey, please leave a comment or send us a private message. We enjoy reading your notes and having an opportunity to pray with you. If you received a blessing through this message, please share it with others. We invite you to become a Living Hope Partner by donating as little as $1 a month through our QR code. Your gifts will help us create new messages and reach more people. Living Hope is a ministry of Ingleside International Incorporated. All donations to Living Hope qualify as a charitable contribution. Thank you for your prayers and support. Next week, we will continue learning together from the Word of God. God bless you and fill you with living hope.